Great. So a couple additional exercises that can be really therapeutic for the lateral hip, particularly when we're having more of this tendinopathy, is a hip hinge or hip thrust type movement. Now there's a series of progressions that you can do in order to help to reload this area. Again, the tendons are going to respond best to isometrics. That is the form of exercise in which you do a sustained contraction rather than dynamic movements, at least to begin with. And so your foundational movement for this would be a bridge or even like a single leg bridge. So it's almost necessary to have some form of banded resistance. You can use the black one here. So phase one, when I usually start people on the ground doing a double limb bridge. So it would start like this. So if I was to spin so the camera could see me, it's almost like this frog leg position. So my knees are together, my feet are shoulder width apart. I'm gonna start by squeezing my buttock and going into a posterior pelvic tilt. I'm gonna then push out against the band and drive up. Now, common mistake is people will extend through their lumbar spine, so they're kind of arch their back. I want to stay in that kind of tucked position, matching out my hip range of motion, but not my spine. And then I'm going to be deliberately pushing. In this case, if my left leg is the involved, I'm going to be driving into the floor with that left leg, simultaneously keeping the tension on the band. I like to encourage people to actually put their hands on their buttocks so they can really feel the muscles in question. You'll notice that the hamstrings will want to kick in, but as long as you're pushing out against band, driving through your heels, you'll get a predominance of glute activation. And again, it should be a burning sensation, sustaining this for up to 30 seconds. Again, that sweet spot when we look at tendon rehab is around 45 seconds. Um, the other cue that I often see is that in people's effort and ambition to push out is that they roll out onto the outside of their foot. So just do your diligence to have to be pushing through your first toe, that is the base of your, your big toe, as well as your medial heel in order to get adequate and effective glute activation. Okay, if that becomes easy for you, the next progression would be doing a semi single leg bridge. So I have a heel prop on the uninvolved leg and then the leg in question is here. Now my, my right leg is just a placeholder to uh, keep me balanced as I drive up with my left leg. Again, pushing through medial heel and base of the first toe, trying to maximize my hip height without arching spine. Again, a sustained hold is usually sufficient around 30 seconds with enough resistance out against the band. This band has about, about 10 pounds of tension at its at 100% length. So I'm pushing again, probably about 15 to 20 pounds against the band as I, I drive up, trying to really feel that glute activation as firmly as I possibly can. Again, whichever version you so choose, doing about five sets of 30 to 45 seconds. If you can sustain a minute of high intensity contraction without compensation, all the better. Third progression, if you're finding that these are for some reason too easy or again, it's not, it, it has to do less with the ease of it. We, want, we certainly want muscle burn. Um, but eventually you'll find that you'll be able to sustain it for, you know, five times, one minute, and it won't be as effective, is the hip thrust. So the common mistakes with the hip thrust is people like lean their shoulders back and their neck back on the on said surface. The, the bench is hitting me about my uh, bra line or my nipple line, okay? And then my whole torso moves as one. As I come up, drive through, again, with it over emphasis on that involved side, pushing out against band. And I'm in this small, this tabletop position, not arching at the spine, still in my tail tuck position, driving out against band, holding for my 30 seconds, okay? Next progression would be using a heel prop or a small stool for my right leg, similar to what we did with the double end bridge. And so that's a really nice progression 
to gradually load the posterior lateral hip, that is your glute max, your glute medius, and your glute minimus. All right, this exercise is a feel-good exercise. It can be done either post-workout and or preemptively uh, when you're stretching out your hip. Uh, in a previous video that kind of demonstrates uh, some other mobility exercises that you can do for your hip uh, before you do your strength exercises. Uh, this one I actually like to do prior to my strength exercises and or post, depending on like how my hip is feeling before I go into them. And really what we're going to be doing is we're going to be distracting the hip. That is to say we're going to have axial load going through the hip such that we're going to get a, a gapping sensation where the ball is going to be slightly pulled on the socket. But it's not going to be a passive pull. We're simultaneously going to be engaging our glute. Okay. And then it's also not going to be passive in the sense that we're just going to let the weight pull. I'm, I'm going to coordinate it with my breath. So on my inhale, I'm going to push my heel further down as I simultaneously elongate my torso or the crown of my head towards the ceiling. So you have this internal tension that you're also creating. I find that starting with about 25% of body weight, working yourself up to 50% of body weight is an adequate therapeutic dosage where you're getting actual physiological changes, but it's still friendly enough on the hip that you can, uh, you're not causing any damage to the involved structures. Uh, I like to go right up to a third of my body weight. That it would be, in my case, I'm 150 approximately, so 50 pounds of pressure. Now, finding the, the right ankle strap can be a bit of a challenge. Um, the, you can zoom in to see the, the one that I have here. Uh, it's called Strap Shaper. It's like, I don't know, 18 bucks on Amazon, should you show, so choose. But any ankle strap would otherwise do. I have found some that go around your forefoot to be a little bit uncomfortable on the foot, and the force goes into my ankle more so than it goes uh, through my hip. Simultaneously, I like this one because this is almost necessary having the strap or the attachment underneath, the, directly under the heel so I get a good axial load through my, uh, through my uh, leg. So I come up, I attach it. If I have a weight stack, I may need to attach it before I add on the load. box doesn't have to be this high, it simply is a means of having some distance between my heel and the tethered point of the, uh, of the cable. Now in traditional gyms you're going to have your weight stack and so this, uh, it doesn't have to be like this free motion arm, you just put the weight, uh, the, the cable all the way down at the bottom, find a box and stand over it and notice that I'm slightly off, uh, like more medial so that it's not just this straight pull straight down, it's more like off to the side. So here I go, I'm going to add on my weight. Right. For the purposes of this video, I'll only go to, again, about that 25% or so, maybe about a little bit higher, we'll go up to 40 pounds. Okay, so there's my 40 pounds. I'm then gonna stand up nice and tall through my right leg and then having something to hold on to, bars or what have you on your cable is key. I'm gonna, if I was just to relax, this would be a relaxed position, anterior pelvic tilt. I'm gonna go into a posterior pelvic tilt, squeezing my left buttock. And then I'm gonna go into my breath. Inhale, I elongate. I push the crown of my head towards the ceiling, distracting or pushing along the axis of my left leg, making my leg almost like go-go gadget leg, trying to make it longer. It may not actually move, but that, that sensation and that activation is key. One, to protect the hip structures, but two, to get a more effective stretch out of the exercise. And this, this axial distraction is going to help to loosen up the joint capsule and stiffness, simultaneously reduce the uh, reflexive joint spasm that is already potentially there if you're already having hip pain or tendonopathy. So I sustain this for up to uh, 30, uh, like 90 seconds. 
I, one minute usually seems to be sufficient. Inhale, I, I make myself long. Exhale, I'm actually going to shift my hips away. Inhale, long. Exhale, shift away. Again, if I was to let myself go, I'd be here. I need to be pulling myself into a normal pelvic orientation. Inhale long, exhale, keep length as a shift away, which gives me a little bit more stretch on that leg. Now you can add a little bit of rotation either to the torso or to the leg, whichever feels good, depending on where you need to stretch the most. But classically, I start people with this posterior pelvic tilt in a more uh, planar position, with the leg just out to the side. Okay, you'll see at times people will use bands um, in their hip mobility. Um, I, I think that's more of a placebo than anything else because of the forces that we know that meet, are necessary to actually cause distraction of the hip are uh, quite profound when you look at some of the studies suggesting again about that 25% to 50% body weight. It, it's one of our largest ball and socket joints and it just demands a lot of force in order to actually mobilize it. Um, I usually do three rounds of one minute to a minute and a half, so 60 to 90 seconds. That lasts about five minutes because I have about a 30 second break in between. I get it, it takes a little bit of a setup, but for me, this is like one of the key things that reduces tension in and around the hip socket, then allowing for the rotational capacity and the other training exercises that we reviewed to go really well. 